Last week would have been my mum's 90th birthday and she was also a breast cancer survivor. So I decided to honor her memory and make a breast cancer awareness necklace. Hi, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Carol, and on this channel I show you how easy it is to make your own jewellery. The necklace I'm making today is a triple strand, and I will walk you step by step through the process and also talk about everything that you need as well. I'm going to leave links in the description box below to all of the materials that I've used, but we're going to be using a lot of these 4mm coloured glass pearls. In fact, we're going to be using 183 of them, so that's quite a number. As well, I've got these breast cancer awareness beads. Now, I've got them in two shapes. I've got some round ones. These are 10 millimeters, and they have the pink ribbon on the side. And I've also got some heart-shaped ones, which also have the pink ribbon on them. And they're also 10 millimeters. As well as that, I have these two 15 millimeter rings. And I have some other supplies here, including a 10 centimeter piece of chain, some 4mm jump rings, some uh, wire guardians, uh, one clasp, one 12mm lobster clasp, I've got a head pin, and I've also got some magic crimp beads. If you purchase the breast cancer beads from us, we do make a donation to the Cancer Society. In terms of tools, you will need two pairs of chain nose pliers. You'll also need a pair of flush cutters and I am going to be using my magic crimp pliers. Now you could use ordinary crimp pliers if you wanted to, but I will talk you through those as well. You'll also need about 120 centimeters of tiger tail. So this necklace, is, as I said, is triple strand and we're going to connect the necklaces, to, all three of them, to these uh, beautiful rings and then attach a clasp to those. So. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to string this strand of beads and talk you through how to attach it to the ring and then we'll talk about the other strands as well. Now I will leave in the accompanying blog post a diagram of how the, string, how the beads are strung and that will help you to determine how many beads go between each of the feature beads here. Now with this strand I wanted the feature bead one, well, one bead to be in the center. I didn't want it to be the heart because if I used the heart, it would be on sideways. So I wanted to put the hearts on the sides and I just punctuated the beads, the pearls, with another round bead here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some tiger tail and we will get stringing. I need a fairly long piece, about 60 centimeters. Now what I'm going to do first is put my tiger tail through onto my bead stopper. Now if you haven't used a bead stopper before, they're amazing. So basically it's just like a big spring, you squeeze the little handles together and pop it on and it stops, it, it holds it firm and stops your beads falling off the other end. So what I'm going to do is start my stringing. Now I'm not going to make you watch me string all of these beads, but I am going to talk about how many beads I have used uh, in the in between the feature beads. I'll just move these rings out of the way for a minute and as I start stringing I will, I will talk to you about the beads that we're going to be using, the number of beads. So at the top here I have added 24 of the little glass pearls. Now with these pearls sometimes the hole is actually filled a little bit with the colour so if you have any problems getting the tiger tail through, just poke a little bit of wire or the head pin through and that will clear the hole. So this first run of pearls is 24, then we're going to put on the round bead, then we're going to put on 12 beads and the heart, another 12 and the centre round bead, another 12 and the heart, 12 again and the round bead and then another 24. And you can see there's quite a lot of symmetry there because we've got 24, 12 is half of 24, 12, 12, 12 and 24. So I'm gonna go ahead and string these and I will be back when I am finished. 
Now that I have all of my beads strung for my first strand, I need to think about the second and third strand. And what I've done, rather than making you watch me string three strands of beads, I've already strung them. So I'm going to move my bead board out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to put my other two strands down beside this one. Now as you can see I've strung all three. Now the second one, or the middle one here, is different from the other two. So what I wanted was I wanted the centre bead to be on the outsides. So I've put the round bead as I did with the one I just strung on the, out, on the uh, centre. And then on the centre strand I didn't use this, a centre bead. I used these two which alternate in the middle of the strand of pearls. I hope that makes sense. As I said, I will leave a link in the description box below for a layout diagram and that way you can, you'll can you know exactly what I've done. So with the centre strand, I'll just move this one out of the way for a minute. Be careful not to drop the beads off the end. And what I did was I did 12 beads in the centre and I did another tw run of 12 on either side of the two heart beads. Then I did two round beads and then I did 31 beads and the reason I did 31 was because I wanted the three strands to be exactly the same length and if I lay them down next to each other they are and they sit quite nicely together. So as you can see I've got a bead stopper on the end of these ones as well. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my wire guardian and I'm going to attach it to the ring. So I'm going to take a uh, one of the rings, I'm going to take one of my magic crimping beads and I'm going to take my crimping pliers. As well as that I will need a wire guardian. Alright, so I am going to put on my crimp bead first. Now if you haven't, I'll move these back out of the way I think, if you haven't ever used a crimp bead what I do is I tend to go fishing with it with the end of my wire so leave it on the table rather than trying to pick it up and poke the wire through the bead it's much easier to do it this way so pop the sort of fish with for the crimp bead with your wire and pop it on now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread the wire up through the side of the of the wire guardian and back down the other side. Now if you haven't used a wire guardian before I've got a whole video on it so you can watch that one as well. Right so that's what I have now. You can see I've got my wire guardian on there and my crimp bead. Now I'm going to use a jump ring to attach to the ring here. So at the moment what I'm going to all I'm going to do is actually Put the crimp, uh, the wire back down through my crimp bead. And normally I would also feed my wire back down through a couple of beads, but I don't think it's going to fit these holes. Oh no, it will fit. No, I missed. There we go. It does fit. So I'm going to put it through three beads. And I like to do that. Some people don't like to do that, but I do because it gives it. I feel it gives it a little bit more strength. So there's my wire coming out the bottom of my of my beads there. So that's what I have now. Now what I need to do is push the crimp bead all the way up close to the wire guardian. And you may need to squeeze the wire guardian together a little bit to get it nice and close. That's okay. All right. So just holding the tail, I'm going to use my magic crimping pliers and I'm going to push the bead into the divot there and squeeze really firmly then I'm going to that's what you get and then I'm going to turn it around and squeeze again and then I'm just going to turn it again and squeeze again until it becomes a nice round ball like a nice round little bead so that's what I have now then I'm going to run my beads up a little bit and I'm going to trim off that excess piece of wire of tiger tail there. Alright, so now I'm going to run my beads up from the other end. 
make sure everything's nice and tight and there's no gaps. Now I'll do the other end in a minute, but right now I'll show you how I'm going to put this onto this ring. So I'm going to take one of my little jump rings and I am going to open it and with both pairs of pliers I'm going to hold it on either side if you haven't used jump rings before I've got a video on how to use them and I'm going to feed on my ring as well as my wire guardian and that's quite a lot to fit through that tiny wee jump ring but it does fit <laughs> Just. and I'm going to close it up and so that is what I have now. Now the reason I'm using the wire guardian here is because it, it needs to be neat because you will actually see it so I wanted it to look nice and professional and nicely finished. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat that for the other end. And then I'm going to go fishing for my crimp bead and thread on my wire guardian. Now I've got my tail here and I want to pull everything up tight. But if I just pull it like that, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. So I'm going to just kind of, actually I'm going to grab my pliers and do this. It's much easier to do with pliers. So pulling, holding onto the tiger tail, coming out the top of the wire guardian, I'm going to move the crimp bead down and then just kind of pull it so that everything moves down. And then once I get it close, I'm going to pull it tight. You don't want it so tight that the beads can't move, but you do want it reasonably tight. Now that is too far away. I've got too much of a gap there, so I'm going to just play with it a little bit more until I get that gap filled up. Sometimes it's good to pull with your pliers this way too. All right, so that's what I have now, and I'm going to squeeze my crimp bead with my magical pliers again. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop off my tail. Now getting in there nice and close with your flush cutters. And don't worry about the end, it'll just disappear inside the beads. Alright, so now I have my two ends and all I need to do now is attach my ring on this end. So I'm going to use my two pairs of pliers again to do that, just like I did before. There's my one strand done, and now I need to attach the other two in exactly the same way, but I do want to make sure that my middle strand is actually in the middle. So I'm going to take that, so I've got my bead stopper here, my, my piece is on my bead stopper. Now this is the centre one here, and I'm going to do it one at a time because I don't want the beads to fall off. So I'm just going to remove that from the bead stopper and make sure that the other one is still attached. I'll put that over there. And I am going to do exactly the same thing. So getting my crimp bead and my wire guardian and my jump ring. Oops.
Now I've crimped all of my strands and they all have their little wire gardens on the end. So I'm going to attach them to the rings using the four millimeter jump rings, just like before, but I need to get, make sure that I get them in the right order. So I'm going to take my jump ring here and open it. You do need to open it reasonably wide to get that ring through. And I'm going to pop on the middle strand, which is the one without the loop, the round bead at the bottom. So it's this one here. And I'm going to pop the wire guardian of that one on. And I'm going to pop on the ring as well. And now I'm going to close that up. So that's what I have now. Now I'm going to put on the third strand. I'm just going to lay it out like that so that I know what I'm doing. And I'm going to open another jump ring. And pop on this wire guardian. And I'm going to make sure that I put it on this side. their jump ring up. Oopsie. Now you could do this with, if you feel that this is too tight, you could do it with six millimeter jump rings as well. I just really like the look of the, the four. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting my pliers in there. I'd really like your opinion. Would you have used the four millimeter jump rings or would you have moved up to six? Because the four millimeter ones made it a little bit fiddly but the six millimeter ones would have changed the look. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment below and let me know. All right, so that's what I have now. And if we check, then we have, let me see. <laughs> so I have the two beads here. No, nope, I've got them twisted. So just checking that you have them all in the right place, and I don't. <laughs> At this stage though, I can do this. <laughs> Alright, that's better. <laughs> but once I get my clasp on, I won't be able to do that, and once I put the other end on. So you need to make sure that it's in the right place before you go and attach the other end. Alright, so taking another jump ring, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with these two as well. Okay, so now I have all of my strands on and you can see they are in the right order. So I've got uh, my two outside strands, I have the beads here and just double checking. Okay, so we're good. Next I'm going to put on the clasp and I do need to make sure that nothing's twisted before I do that. So I've got my two pairs of pliers, I'm going to get my jump ring and I'm going to open it. I'm going to put on the clasp first and then I'm going to put on the ring making sure nothing moves around the, the circle around the loop and just feed that on. Now sometimes it's really good just to give this a squeeze rather than using both pairs of pliers because that way you've got it in your hand right now and actually I don't know if you heard that but it clicked together really nicely that way sometimes that's what you're looking for that nice click sound there's my clasp on this one now I've got my clasp on I'm going to add my extender chain on the other loop here and I'm also going to use my little extra pearl and my head pin to make a dangle on the end of the chain but I'm going to attach it first so I've got another four millimeter jump ring here and I'm just going to take my pliers open it and now I'm going to add on my 
chain, so the first link of my chain, and I'm going to add on my loop here. Then I'm going to close up my jump ring. So this is what I have now, and what I'm going to do next is add a little dangle to the end of this chain. And I'm going to do that, I'm going to make it using my head pin and my one remaining bead. So I'm just popping on the bead onto the head pin. And I'm going to just create a loop on the end here. So I'm going to do that by putting my thumbnail right at the top of the bead, and I'm going to bend my wire over, like that and take my flush cutters and using the flush side of my cutters I'm going to cut that wire at about a centimetre from the bend. Now if you haven't made a loop before I will leave you a link in the description box below for how to a video about how to make a loop. All right now I'm taking it in my pliers here making sure it's not sticking up and I'm just going to turn it, readjust and turn it again just to make a nice round loop. Right, just a little bit more. It's not quite sitting centered, so I'll just give it a little bit of a push with my pliers, just holding it with my pliers. There we go. That's what I have, and I am going to attach it with yet another four millimeter jump ring. Feeding on the end of the chain and my little loop that I just made. Now you didn't, you don't need to do this but I think it just adds that little bit of extra to add uh, something to the end of an extender. You could put something else on it, you could put a teardrop or a charm or something like that, it's, either, it's up to you. But I quite like the idea of having just that little bit of the pearls at the end there. Alright so let's do this necklace up. Now there's several ways you could do this up. You could attach it to the uh, loop if you wanted to, like this. Or of course you can attach it to any of the links in the chain. To make it longer. So there it is, all finished with its little gorgeous little dangle on the end. And by default, this necklace will twist when you wear it, after telling you you needed to make them straight while you were making it. Now when you put it on, they're going to move, so that's just the nature of the beast. But you can adjust it and uh, while you're wearing it. And the beauty of having it all sitting nice and flat at the top means that it gives you a little bit more play and it won't sit at a weird angle. There's my breast cancer awareness necklace. Now it's not so breast cancer awareness that it's in your face, it's quite subtle and I really like that about it, but it does tell the story. Now the other thing you could do here is wrap it around your wrist and wear it as a bracelet. Because you've got that extender chain, you can actually make it as long or as short as you want. So that's kind of cool as well and it would make a really cool bracelet just as much as it will make a really cool necklace. If you would like to see more jewellery making tutorials then it would be great if you would subscribe and that way you'll never miss a thing. And of course if you enjoyed this one it would be really wonderful if you would give me a little thumbs up. And we would love to have you join our YouTube community. Also check us out on Facebook and Instagram because we share things there all the time. Thank you so much for watching today, it was lovely having you along for the ride and I will see you again soon.